Welcome to episode 46. Hey, 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 another episode of the High Tech Podcast here. Joined by myself, Josh, and Will, or the Will Illingworth, or William Illingworth, the, or I uh, got no, those were lame nicknames. I literally just said your name in multiple ways. Captain that Standard was, over here can't come up with something standard for me. I guess. Yeah, I don't. Uh, it's I, it's bad. Um, I let that go for a while, and now I feel like I tried it again, and it's still not working. I'm some, not a nickname guy. You're going to need some practice, I think. Yeah, I guess. Uh, it's fine. Anyway, uh, welcome back, guys. Another episode this week. Uh, excited because we are about to kick off a series. But before I talk more about that, we got to give our general spiel that we know you all enjoy and are glad we say because you forget it. I know. It's fine. What is, what's What's the spiel? I, I forgot. The spiel is, is that we're on the internet, <gasps> the interwebs, and not just in podcast form, but in social form social media on twitter uh so make sure you guys we say it every time but make sure if you don't uh or haven't already go check us out on twitter at high tech podcast i finished it nice, high tech podcast n- n- nice save <laughs> at high tech podcast there we go um subscribe check us out we sometimes post fun things there like little uh questions uh that you should try out and check out so go go over there um you could also reach us at inbox at high tech pod dot us in in regular fashion i'm gonna pick an animal that you must send to that email um for this episode and this episode only has anybody actually taken advantage of this yet i don't know no i was just in the inbox 20 minutes ago it's okay okay I, cool I, well i'm, I'm air... gonna be honest i don't think any of the episodes we've recorded with this are out yet at the time oh, really? of recording okay. this <laughs> my bad okay well well we we shall see um but the the animal that i'm gonna pick today is an armadillo Ooh. armadillo okay so if you're listening to this episode go hit us up with an armadillo at inbox at hightechpod.us or you can send it to twitter that's fine too we you can send it. in a comment to twitter All either one works or both um and then also just a reminder that we have a website hightechpod.us there's a theme <gasps> in all of the things we're saying high tech pod pod just saying yeah or podcast but uh high tech pod or podcast uh high tech pod dot us is our website if you've been listening to us and you haven't checked that website out yet go do it stop waiting go do it right now there are episode pages tied to each of the episodes you listen with awesome resources and things there um for using the apps that we talk about so make sure to check that out okay that's the end of my spiel uh hopefully go subscribe or check us out if you don't i'm gonna say it again next week so uh this episode though this week we're kicking off a series will yeah. we have a series in the middle of our our season we've we're trying some, some new things this year two parters before but this is yeah. the first time where we're intentionally or the interview series we did last year sure. you know sure. that was that was a series yeah, that was me. several several things you know i i remember stuff sometimes i don't this time though we are starting a series on accelerated learning and if you're like what is accelerated learning that is a great question to start off with, and we're doing a whole series on it it's so that we can explain it and make sense of it. Where all of the children or students drink energy drinks and then complete ah, yes. their degree program. They only drink Monster and <laughs> then they complete their degree <laughs> program. That's right. No, so we'll talk about what accelerated learning is actually in this episode. So I'm super excited uh, for this episode because we're kicking it off with a guest uh, who is joining us. Um, so we're going to be talking here just in a second with uh, Justin Harbin, a good friend of both Will and I's. Uh, Will, you've known him longer, but uh, I work with him still. Yep. You know, yep. so we you both, win that you know, battle. We have win that battle, I guess. Uh, you know, it's fine. It's not a competition. If it was, you would still win. But <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not a competition. Anyway, Justin's an awesome guy. Long history in education and apparently a long history in accelerated learning as we find out in this episode. So i um, super excited for this conversation and I'm not going to belabor it anymore. Let's jump over to uh, our conversation with Justin about what is accelerated learning and uh, how do we make sense of all this? While I'm pretty excited for all of our episodes and I was especially excited to record with some friends and even family members recently. This episode might take the cake for me because our guest today has been my professional colleague and friend for eight years now. Is that not right, Justin? That makes me feel kind of old, but I'm going to say, yeah, (laughs) it's been that long. 
<laughs> Justin and I uh, started working for the same group, same institution in 2014. It was online education. None, of, neither of us knew what we were doing. Nope. And uh, the rest is history. We, we've we've turned over LMSs. We may as well have turned over online programs and educational models in all that time. We've all gone to different jobs. Every everybody that was in that original 2014 group has all been all over the place. Uh, but we're we're just so excited today. We're we're welcoming Dr. Justin Harbin, EDD. He is the director for the Center for Teaching and Learning. He may also be an honorary Grand Poobah of musicals or not. I don't know. Um, and he is an it's, assistant professor. It's not in his signature, but it should be. It should be. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, um, we're hoping that this episode is going to dig into, you know, a little bit more than just YouTube suggestions, but practical mm. examples of what it's been like to be a part of accelerated learning programs in the online world and, and whether or not they can be uh, successful and beneficial um, and, and the full scope of things. Now, Justin, what's what do you think was the first time, if, if I recall, in 2014, you came to us from K-12. And so very shortly thereafter, you started to get into this world of accelerated learning. Was that your first experience with it? Yes, for accelerated, it was. Um, by that point, uh, in my own journey as a student, uh, I had done undergrad and master's and the whole traditional thing. Uh, master's, I, I did the old night classes, uh, driving in and... Um, I mean, by that point, there were online options and maybe even accelerated options. But for me, I wanted to be in person. And so I did that. And uh, yeah, no, so when I first came from K-12, from being a high school teacher uh, and moved into the role as an instructional designer um, and, and faculty member then, too, because the first courses I taught at the college oh, level were right. accelerated. Oh, wow. That's so, right. okay. yeah. So to, so to lay it out here, I have taught... At our institution, and some of this is shifting over time and things like that, but back in 2014, we had a five-week accelerated kind of night class situation, kind of traditional Oof. adult learner. Yeah, it was you know, it was a heavy lift. Um, <laughs> then I just I just remember being so exhausted coming like after teaching that long. Um, I had six-week online courses that I was designing and teaching. Um, you know, contracting to work with uh, other faculty, but also teaching my own courses. Um, and of course, I, not long after that, I also began teaching the traditional semester length, both uh, fully on campus and uh, blended. Um, and some of those were online for 16 wow. weeks as well. So oh, I've wow. kind of taught the okay. gamut. Um, yeah, and I think them. what's, yeah, I, I, I was just thinking about today and I, I really do think I did. And I really interestingly, and, and some institutions do it this way, is I had, there was two courses in particular that I designed that uh, across programs. So whether this thing was online, whether it was accelerated or traditional, we actually kept the same top level learning outcomes. So oh. trying to meet the same learning outcomes, I've taught the same course in all those modalities I just mentioned. <laughs> Traditional, on campus, online, accelerated. I mean, man, yeah. So so the comparison between those, good grief. Yeah, so so I've lived it. Wow. I mean, that's, that's something that Josh and I have talked about often is like one of the pain points of designing yeah. these courses, right? Across different delivery time frames is like maybe that's where we need to change it first is at the outcome level but to hear you say <laughs> that you've yeah. suffered that experience in my okay. opinion of uh, teaching yeah. the same outcomes across those those deliveries is amazing i think there was yeah you, you gained some insight on it for sure like because because you just you expect certain things and they're different learner populations so that's a factor right but yeah. like yeah I'd, um and come to think of it too uh during my doctor program i did have a few accelerated seven and a half week classes maybe we'll talk about those later because those were designed they were curricular mapped uh, to coincide with traditional length courses. And there's some, there's some kind of behind the scenes design work that's going on there that I think is doing some good stuff. But um, wow. yeah, so I have to, I have a little bit of experience there. What would yeah. you say if you were to kind of put it in broad terms, like, okay, we just talked about all the time frames and stuff, but how would you define if you were to give a, a positive definition <laughs> to accelerated <laughs> learning? Or a like, neutral definition. It doesn't have to have or, a feeling. It can just be yeah, a, Switzerland. a yeah. definition, oh, you know, of what accelerated learning means. Cause this is the beginning of the series. So for most of those listening, we can't, we don't necessarily assume how much they know. So like we all kind of have different, I feel like when someone hears accelerated learning, even within an institution and for context too, like oh, yeah. Justin, and I know each other. Well, we we work in similar uh, circumstances. Like I, I feel like even in our interactions, Justin, I could find four people in our work areas and they all would give me different definitions of what accelerated oh, yeah. learning is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean like context matters, right? Like in higher ed where it's really popular, it's not the only place it is, but I think in higher ed, since we're always stuck on the traditional semester model or often we are, we think in terms of, Oh, it's that, it's that kind of a course, but it's, 
it's squished. It's it's you know <laughs> we, 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 we squeezed it down, and you're doing the same thing or trying to do the same thing in like eight weeks. Uh, some schools do it faster. Um, trying to truncate the learning process um mm. to kind of move it move things along quickly for and here's the language i've heard most often with the idea of retaining either retaining students because it's fast like you know they won't know what hit them i don't oh. know what you know, maybe the mentality is like boom it just happens so fast <laughs> like you're done um or maybe it's you barely uh, even hear you yeah. barely hear the back wheels you know go over them with <laughs> yeah, the, no, like, the bus you have no and, idea what they're out yeah. Exactly. So I don't know if it's that. And maybe it's even like a marketing concern in terms of, hey, look how fast and convenient our programs are. Because especially in the online modality, we see this where it's convenience is a significant concern. I've been there myself as a student. Like that's um, right. the ability, the flexibility, let's say. So yeah, yeah, I don't mean I don't mean all those things negatively. I think that's just what I've heard from people who kind of advocate for it. So well, and yeah, to throw in there, that. like, yeah, I mean, I would second that. And I, I like your definition of truncating, because I feel like every time we come to this definition, like somebody tries to throw out the amount of weeks the course is, right? In higher ed, it's like, oh, yeah. accelerated learning is six or it's eight or it's, you know, and it's like, but at the point, it's like, no, it's just like, it's truncating the general traditional experience we're used to. And in, in higher ed for us, that means yeah. like the semester length courses. Um, but also like these courses, I think. Like even even as we'll talk through the series and we start to talk to students, anytime I've talked to students in this, there's also like this push and desire where it's like most of the students taking these courses, not all, but most are people working in some context and they're trying to be yeah. like, well, I want to go back to school, but I also have families and I have this or I'm trying to do this and I don't want to go back for the full, you know, four years or in master's degrees. I think the reason it's popular in graduate is because I don't want to go for this long graduate degree. I want to try to mm. get this done a little quicker. Um, and, uh, so I think sometimes it's not just like, not always like a marketing thing. I think sometimes it can be like a pot, like not going to say neutral, but like a desire from the students saying, I want to try to finish this earlier. And the, the, then the institution be like, well, we need to make money. So let's, let's try to fit that need, um, Justin, and meet there. How long was your master's process where you're doing those night classes? Is oh, yeah. that four years? Four five? Five? It, it was, it drug out. Yeah. Cause I was teaching full time let alone coaching, you know, two seasons a year normally. So like, yeah, for me to fit those things in, I loaded my summers up. That's kind of what I did. But it was okay. three, a little over three years. So a little bit longer uh, on okay. the, for a master's. Uh, but um, was, it, was it two courses in a semester time frame? Or do you do one course a semester? You, you loaded your summers and then... Okay. Yeah, I only really could handle. I found that just to keep up with the reading, and this, so these were full semester length. Um, just you know, obviously kind of a traditional program, a lot of reading and things like that. I loved it. Uh, great, great school, great program. But um, but that was uh, about as much as I could handle while teaching full time uh, and my other kind of responsibilities. So like, yeah, it was like uh, one course a semester, and then load up three or four over the summer. Um, wow, yeah, it was Whew. like you just beat yourself <laughs> up. Like yeah. Well, it kind of was. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed it because, it, yeah, it was in K-12. So people always joke, you know, K-12 teachers have their summers off and it's like, yeah, OK, whatever. Um, I spent most of my <laughs> summers revising lesson plans or prepping for that new course they loaded me up with or, you know, they were, you're always busy. So um, but it, it worked out. Yeah. Okay. Well, and you're the like consummate educator. You, you, you live and breathe education. You've loved it from day one. I know it. I know it of you and your heart and your personality, but like that took you three plus years to get through your mm -hmm. master's degree. And yet we have folks trying to get through bachelor's degrees in a year and a half, you know, and that's, yeah. that's, that's some of this, like a little bit of just emotional response for me on this subject of accelerated learning is like, really, you know, like I did my bachelor's in three years because I had done community college courses before I mm -hmm. went to my bachelor's degree, but I even felt like that three years felt short i i don't i, I don't know maybe it's the, that's us like you know education folk but it's like there's never enough time yeah, yeah. do you feel like that's and a big I, play in this and i think there's maybe a factor there's the old degree completion programs right and those are still around uh so it's one thing i think if you're like oh hey i i, I was in college years ago and life got in the way and so i'm coming back now it's so like there's i think degree completion is a different animal perhaps in some respects and that's kind of where the stuff got it started but now you see it everywhere um mm. you know these kind of accelerated models so uh or or even let's say like a 
and this is a bit different animal even altogether, is the the four plus one programs uh, where a master's oh, done yeah. in one year. But even then, they're, they're doing some double dipping on that. So it's not quite the same. You know, I will say, this is funny, all the memories. Um, it, uh, in my master's program, since I took a little bit longer, I kind of uh, paced out of my cohort towards the end. Some of them went a little faster than me. So for the last year, I would say, I was in with another cohort of they had, they had these, uh, honestly, they, they weren't teaching yet. I was teaching full time. These were like pre-service teachers who had done the bachelor's and then went right into a master's before kind of really, in, I mean, they'd done student teaching, oh, right? Wow. And internships. Yeah, yeah. But they hadn't, and, and so it was a yeah, it was a different thing. I was obviously at a very different place, asking very different questions as a teacher. Yeah, yeah. You know, kind of getting into my career at that point than they had been at that point. So I don't, I can't say what their experience was. Just it, I just it was really clear we're in a different spot. You know, as far right. as what we're getting out of this, but. Well, yeah. and with the accelerated programs, we get that of all the different types of people who come to those courses. Oh, yeah. You know, you got you've got a six week course that's got uh, you know a fifty year old father, a three, mm. uh, you know, a twenty one year old who who had to pivot out of traditional education and these, and then yeah. everything in between those. Oh, it's all you know, over the it's, place. It's crazy. I've I've worked with people like working on the enrollment side for these types of courses, and you try to get them to define the student, and like I. I literally sat in a meeting where somebody said, oh, you know, like 20 to 30. And literally the next person was like, well, I think it's more like 40 to 60, you know? And I was like, so <laughs> like a human being, is that, is that what we're, yeah. we're like? Is this like- <laughs> I, I think you, you asking that question, looking for the answer is like trying to uh, catch a, a, a yeah. greased hog. Like it you're was, just, you're not going to get it. Where dude. are you going to get it at? So now, so just, I'm curious, right? So you've, the reason, you know, we brought, not just because we know Justin, but because of like your, <laughs> And it, quite frankly, even just talking on this episode, I'm like, wow, Justin has way more interaction with Accelerator than I even realized. Like, like this um, part of the question is like, dang, what was he doing for so long? No, um, great question. I kind of <laughs> wonder the same thing. But, uh, <laughs> like, so, <laughs> but my question right, is, sorry, I killed Will, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, he's him. dying. We'll get him back eventually. But like, so on the design side, right? So like you've mm-hmm. done some design work. You mean like, even the three, the three of us have interacted in different. Sorry, Will's like crying on the other side. I'm back. I'm sorry. Okay, we're I'm good. Sorry. Please um, continue. So, on the design side, what, from your experience, like, how would you define the process that you've had to go through to take, especially? I think the thing that I'm, I'm curious about courses already at slos for a full semester and say like okay now we're gonna do this in in your context i know it was six weeks i mean like other people are doing eight weeks and we were like oh well we'll do six i feel like that seems manageable um (laughs) (laughs) oh that's a great question so I want to hand the ed- educator and me says, Hey, we're going to find a way we're going to, we're going to, you know, scaffold students toward, toward that, you know, that outcome. Uh, now part of it too, is in, in, each institution is different. In my institution, it was, we're going to use the same ones. So we have this, this kind of core catalog we can refer to. And you know, that, that's kind of how we're going to do it. The courses I taught, I would say and designed for the most part, the ones I had more control over, I felt yeah, generally, can you meet those outcomes? Yes. I will say as a designer and then the faculty member who had to teach some of those, did my students meet the outcomes? Yes. Across the different expressions of that. Were their achievements <laughs> the same? No, like not at all. Like it was the, the actual outcome my students achieved was different. Uh, did they meet the, the bare definition? Yeah. I think I got them there most of them most of the time, right? Yeah. I think from a design perspective, it's such a different animal because um, well, we can go, we can talk for days about the cognitive science you know, kind of component here, the learning science behind this, we know there are no shortcuts to time on task, you know, like, mm-hmm. in the world of the, right. uh, of SOTL, the scholarship of teaching and learning, like this idea of accelerated learning was like a blip in like the 70s. And then it died out like because you now you see the people carrying the torch nowadays for accelerated learning are just not those who are from that space of kind of the scholarship of teaching and learning. There are other right. folks with their concerns. I don't expect them if that's not your area of expertise, I don't expect you to know all those things. So I'm not trying to bash uh, folks who are kind of carrying that torch for accelerated. But um, like everything we know about learning, learning is that it takes time and there aren't shortcuts. And what gets so tricky for me is I was just thinking about this the other day. So do you guys mind if I take like a, a very small side notes? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll circle right back. All right. All right. We're so this came from Twitter. So, so this came from a Twitter thread. So just full of disclosure. Um, and a little, <laughs> it was a little cheeky. It caught my attention. Uh, but there's, there's another uh, faculty member on Twitter who's had some good, uh, helpful stuff in the past. And um, he has this statement. The leading statement was, I think teaching is more difficult than um, than being a brain surgeon. And so I had a good laugh. I'm like, 
and, he's, and then he said, you know, here's the thread and was going to unpack. I'm like, okay, oh, here we go. Let's my. see, man. So I'll just briefly. So basically what he was saying, and, and, and this, I'll try this back in. Trust me, guys. Um, <laughs> was, was, was essentially, hey, the brain surgeon, now obviously there's a lot of other things, right? But, but in the act of doing the work itself, right? The brain surgeon is one-on-one, all right, with the patients. They're, they're, in a, they're in a sterile, controlled environment. That person's unconscious. Let's remove that factor. They're out. You know, um, beyond that, they're basically looking at like physical structures. You poke this, this happens. I, I'm, I'm not a brain surgeon, right? So, um, <laughs> but, and, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not minimizing the expensive right in here. training, you know, brain surgeons are far smarter than I will ever be, but it's a very controlled, simple thing, right? Classroom. Oh, good grief. I've got 20 kids. I've got, um, you know, 15 adults, whatever it is. And I don't even get to look at specific parts of their brain. I can't see learning, right? I only get language and metaphor and symbols to communicate with. Um, and, and the research we have on human learning is that for us to know whether it's meaningful, whether it's going to stick, we can't know that for like at least three weeks. Like cramming can, can stick around for like, what, two weeks is generally most of the studies I've seen, the meta studies on yeah. uh, students who cram. Like you can kind of retain that for a couple, three weeks. So we kind of have to wait beyond that. So, well, wow. boom, half your course is gone. Like, and I don't have time to go <laughs> right. back, you know? So um, that's... Unless it's... That's Unless right, it's that's one of those students wonder. who gets the exception, right? And they get hey, to no. take a six-week course across 15 weeks. Oh, and <laughs> I've seen students do just brilliant work, to be fair, in, in an accelerated course. Um, yeah, They have been capable yeah. of, of just incredible work. So, you know, um, my students always rise to the challenge. They're, they're great. But, yeah, so that's, that's one of those things that immediately comes to mind. It's like, well, man, we know actually a lot about how learning works. Like, we've learned a lot, especially in the past couple of decades. We know we need time to forget things. And then practice remembering them. You know, you need you need you need time to compare things. Like, well, man, like that's that's just it accelerating just makes it kind of hard. Right. Yeah, and that's just that's yeah. just some that's just some element of, of of the of the science on the learning, right? It's just one piece of it. Well, and and so one of the things I like to think about is a thought practice here and comparing. Like in general, cognitive science and this cognitive learning, right, would kind of lean towards like we need more time on things, right? But it's about that time on task. Like if I want to learn to knit i need more time on the task of knitting right Mm. great if i need a new skill or new new style of knitting i need more time on that task yet but that doesn't one of of those things i think that people might get a little nitty nitpicky here with like oh but you know aren't we trying to do micro learning and can't like can't like quick youtube videos teach things for to people like yes actually but the point is that 9.9 out of 10 of those micro learning things do one thing very quickly very and, and then you can yeah. come back to that one thing and you should come back to that one thing as many times as possible. So, you know, in one sense, don't take accelerated learning to think to make it seem like, well, micro learning is a thing and that's working like you can teach people through ads. You teach people in apps like that's a big yeah. that's a booming industry right now. Oh, yeah, uh, that's that's a that's like. The smallest little like those that's one of those little one piece Legos. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like, you take, like, a little corner piece of a Lego, yeah. right? Uh even accelerated castle is still talking about like a half completed castle you know like it's not the same thing don't just think because micro learning can do something can do it well that accelerated learning is therefore going to work the idea with accelerated learning as well this is something that josh and i wrestled with uh, in some of our conversations around this this series if you're gonna do accelerated learning well you've got to do it to the outcomes and the outcomes there should be fewer there should be fewer outcomes oh yeah so that yeah. in the six weeks you can do them well yep. because you bring up you bring up a really good point like people point to like micro learning or that concept especially because we see it in places right like and it's it, that one done well is does really work well like this idea of kind of focusing in on something spending kind of that that significant time on task into that is like well we should be able to then accelerate learning it's just that they need to invest more time they need to put more stuff into it but then you start defeating the purpose of the micro learning like you start defeating nobody went okay i'm going to show this youtube video so you can learn in two minutes 18 tasks for building your entire (laughs) car i don't build cars so i got nothing um but we often talk about tanks on this podcast so let's talk about it's a video for building tanks this is part of our tank class that's right you don't show an entire like a two-minute video 
on building an entire tank you know like it's it's on a specific task that and two I, minute video is to get in the tank that's yeah, that's, that's what that's getting into the tank. Yeah. I don't even know how to do top, that. <laughs> open the hatch and yeah, get in just jump in do you so it's defeating the purpose it's trying to jam all of this into here and that the whole point of that accelerated focused time now you're competing for for energy and for time and i think that's mm-hmm. the part I really struggle with because you start to load into that. And then for me, it feels like the whole course becomes a cram fest. And then you're trying to cram in this information um, when that's not that's not what this concept of like micro learning, accelerated learning was for. It was this idea of like mm. breaking things out into manageable tasks and focused learning. If I've looked at these courses and it, like we're trying to find positive things, we're not going to totally say negative things across this entire episode, episode or, or series, folks. But uh, the biggest criticism I have is that like when I look at it, it's like that's not what it's doing. It's not focused learning. Um, I've heard yeah. complaints of like too many topics all in one week because, well, mm. of course, you take learning outcomes that were designed for a 14 week course and say, well, you're going to now have to try to get there. But over six, eight weeks, whatever they pick. Uh, in that method, it's just going to be, they're going to be rushing to get it done. And there's sometimes I feel like there's kind of this assumption that like, well, it's the student's fault. They're not in, in acknowledging or investing Ooh, enough energy yeah. into Ooh. what's going on. And was like, but Ooh. we know people don't learn this way. Like, is it really their fault if we're creating an environment that doesn't foster learning? Um, like that's <laughs> now he's gone to meddling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're touching on some interesting stuff there too. I think the micro learning, it's just, it's different outcomes require different designs, right? Yeah. Um, it mm. works great for certain things. I, th- you know, I, I think there's uh, this is a little, this is a side thing. I'm not going to, I'll just drop this nugget. We can move on. Uh, I've been thinking a lot lately as a faculty developer, and even back when I was an instructional designer, um, I find a very different experience. There's a different, there's a, there's a huge distinction between training and, and development of, of teachers. Mm. I, I don't like personally the word training. Micro learnings might look really. So you think of like even instructional design in terms, but I don't like. I mean, that's not the kind of work I do. People do really great work in that. So if you're do if you're writing, you know, trainings uh, for corporate or whatever, like that's great. That's where micro learning is going to like kill it. And, and there's certain outcomes you're going to do there. Um, if you're looking at college graduate level, like that's a different kind of education that we're after. Mm-hmm. And so it just, it just requires different things, you know? So yeah, I think it's, yeah, it, it's, it does that it doesn't work. And so from a design perspective, it's like, what's actually going on here? Like, what are, what are, what are things that are acting on my students? And yeah, like Josh, like you said, the worst of it, of course, when it breaks, when it doesn't work, we blame the students, oh, kids these days, or these, these students just aren't up to snuff nowadays. And it's like, or maybe we're asking them to do superhuman things. Um, yeah. <laughs> like maybe. <laughs> or things that are yeah. out there. I mean, like, listen, think about it. how many times have we seen a student in a course like this that's like, one, they're taking a fully online accelerated course. Like, let's just talk about that for a second. And yeah. then they don't know how to even open their computer. Like, and they're trying to also then take this six, eight week course, whatever it may be. Um, but they, they're not even prepared for the environment they're about to take it in. And then on top of that, the amount of times I've heard students go, what i need more time it's like well Mm. we can't give you more time in this accelerated model it kind of sounds like you're asking for a not accelerated model and if that's the case then (laughs) accelerated learning is not what is not for you like that's not it's not gonna help and and that's where i think i really struggle with this and i the more we've been talking about this series i think i've been struggling more and more with this concept of like i feel like we've done some of this because students wanted this desire to get done faster but they get into it and they immediately stop liking it like the amount like the students we've talked to in this oh, yeah. environment and then their complaint is i don't have enough time and it, i feel like we haven't set them up well in the midst of that I don't know, I've, I've been struggling with this if we've been talking more about the series i think i'm more of a doomsday human being in the midst of the series so i need to lift <laughs> myself up but um yeah but that's and that makes me think too as you were talking about kind of students being overwhelmed and we're, and we're talking, I, I think we you're, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to speak for you, Josh. And it's, <laughs> I, I <laughs> That's think, fine. I Go think for it. Too, is it is on the best of days, right? Yeah. Like we're teaching in a pandemic where people are experiencing trauma in very real ways. And that there's so much we could talk about uh, when it comes to teaching and learning from that perspective on the best of days. The impact of stress and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so what really comes to mind is from a design perspective in particular is the whole cognitive load theory and 
obviously we don't have time mm-hmm. to unpack all of that, but that extrinsic cognitive load, that heavy lifting, we're asking students to do the task switching that is constant uh, because I got to mm-hmm. cram all these activities in to meet my accreditation yeah. requirements. We have to have so many hours of you know reading. We have videos, uh, reflections for all those things. Then we're working on the big project. You got a group project. So so having them, yeah, carry that. It is, it is and, and let me just say, and Josh, I think we talked about this last week. Um, <laughs> I am guilty as an early instructional designer itself because I I just love all of the ideas, all of the third-party ed tech tools plugging into my course. We're doing two (laughs) projects. We're doing social learning. and Nothing's changed. I just destroyed my students. Like I look back at those and I'm like, I I increased what was already a heavy load because I put, I different, I almost over differentiated uh, in in terms (laughs) of, of, of too much, too many options, too many things, right? Like I increased, uh, they were constantly trying to figure out what does Harbin want for me now? Um, and oh, so I, wow. I've realized since then I had to simplify, right? Like, yeah. so that's, that's, that's a design thing. I think that gets only uh, accentuated in a accelerated environment. So simple yeah. is best. I think really yeah. keep it straightforward, consistent. Mm. So but, well, like, and I, go ahead, Will. go ahead, go ahead, Josh. Well, I'm going to take us a different direction. So whatever thought you got, you go that I was going to take us a different direction. Which direction are you going? (laughs) I want to go, folks, this is a high tech podcast, right? We don't have solid outlines and Will and I often ignore them. So I'm going to take us off a different direction because I think you're, you're jumping me into something, Justin, I think would be a good segue for us in the midst of this is like, okay, so let's, let's put aside our general, just like big thoughts about accelerated learning, all, all the learning theory that we, that basically says, no um so let's let's put that aside for a second and let's say in a very reality we don't live in a perfect world and we're being asked to design accelerated courses and this feels very real for some of us on this podcast um so let's okay. let's say we don't live in that perfect world you're about to design accelerated course what at least could we do to to make it as best as we could like it to to try to um make it the at least the most conducive experience that it could and will's laughing because apparently we were thinking the exact same transition so this is cool i was gonna i was taking the fact that he landed on something positive i was like let's keep going with that i love that (laughs) and then then we yeah so so we're here yeah Yeah. so what do you i mean like you know how how looking back at all the stuff you've had to deal with and even some of the stuff and like, you're not alone. I mean, I've looked at stuff that I've dealt with in some of these Excel records and been like, oh, what the heck did I do? Um, or yeah, like yeah. allow to happen. Uh, so like, <laughs> it's, it's a scary yeah. one. So it's, it's, I think we have some thoughts on that. Yeah, no, I, I do. I think so. Yeah. Looking first, like, okay, what are the, what are the issues of this mode out of, well, the modality and learning, say online in particular, but also the accelerated. Uh, if some of the issue is a lack of space to stop, reflect uh to to uh to engage in metacognition um and kind of self-check hey do i know do i know this am i aware that i know this or i don't know this uh if i realize i don't know something do i know where to go like space for that we know we know all humans need that we know humans need space time to kind of forget for a time then revisit and kind of practice retrieving stuff that retrieval practice Mm. so for me um, it's going to be really crucial to build in a regular cadence of reflecting on uh, maybe it's a quick knowledge check from a previous week um, or even heck previous previously in that week because you've done a whole lot um, <laughs> in, in, in that one week. So so there's those kind of self check, quick knowledge checks. Those are pretty easy to accomplish, uh, but just reflection and kind of monitoring of our understanding. Um, and then for me, what is like the it's, I mean, it's important for any instructional design is scaffolding, especially the larger assessments come to mind. College course, we have that big paper. We have, and let's be real, in an accelerated environment, you cannot assign the same number of pages that you would traditional semester and, and get the same quality of writing. It's just, it's, it can't mm. happen because writing just takes time. So we've got we've to adjust our expectations. But for me, what's so important is when I designed checkpoints for students to practice prerequisite knowledge and skills, toward a major or like mid-level assessment, um, I need to create points for their professor to have a feedback loop with them or with peers, oh, which sure. continues to help them stop and self-check. How am I doing before things get off the rails? Because good grief, you get stuck behind, it, you're, you're week mm. three and you realize I don't know this foundational concept, you're, you're smoked. Like, like yeah. I don't, like we're, we're, the class is almost done, man. Like, so- um, You can't catch up. So yeah, we got to build those those kind of scaffolds in place all over the place, the kind of opportunities for feedback loops. That to me becomes one of the most important things we can do. 
I also think anything we can do to reduce extrinsic cognitive load and those things will help. But um, so, so simple, regular cadences of learning by all means have a good variety of multimodal learning, but just pick to a nice smaller selection. And I'm preaching to myself on that one. Yeah. Um, don't get all excited. Yeah. Um, simple is good. And, and, um, and that will help you leverage those kind of special different moments as well. But Keep it simple. Keep the graphics and all those kind of things. They, they must all serve a purpose. Everything must be there to serve a purpose. Keep text minimal. Wisely use white space. Um, those things all help in this environment when it is. You would open up a so you know a module or a, a week, however way your school structures that in your LMS, and there are so many activities. So even the ways <laughs> like you think about the 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 user interface, the visual. Uh, interface there. I think it becomes really important from a design perspective too. How do we keep things simple and help students focus on what's most important? Learning is effortful. Let's help them manage their attention. Attention is such a a finite resource. It's that little tiny pinpoint spotlight, right? And so Mm. how can we help them set them up for success uh, and, and using that attention well. Yeah. As you're going over some of those like UX things, user experience things of like white space, text amounts, I'm, I just did a count. I've been looking at a computer screen at this point for 13 hours today. <laughs> you know, Snap. like I know when I got up and started working, I know I when I turned away from the like, but even those 15 or 30 minute moments where I was like scarfing down food because I was between things like <laughs> I, I wouldn't even count that as time against like, yeah. I feel like I have been looking at screens uh. for 13 hours at this point in the day, right? Mm-hmm. And that is what a professional who's not doing education is dealing with. Mm. Someone who is a professional who has their life and maybe family resp- requirements, and then is is being requ- is doing an online degree. Like that's just eye strain. That's just yeah. tiring. There's just you know, and that's where you're right. Like things as simple as like leaving white space, not too much text, not too many videos, not the too much gene, if you will. Mm. We really need to keep that in check while we're doing this kind of accelerated online design because we need to let the folks get to the work, get get to the content without too much of our stuff getting in the way. It, yeah. it yeah. really needs to be. Yeah, I love that. It needs to be simple for them to get to the stuff they have to do. I would even say too, I'm thinking of things like I love uh, my, my educational philosophy is, is, you know, kind of social constructivist. So we're, we're talking about how can I set students up to co-create uh, understanding uh, together in community. I believe humans learn best in community, um, uh, which is again, why I struggle with, especially like self-paced uh, oh, kind yeah. of hyper accelerated mm-hmm. things. Um, you know, some of the competency based things can kind of carry these, these issues with them. Uh, depending on what you're trying to do, right? I'm talking traditional education, like we're talking college degrees. That's, that's where I would have some issues. In other settings, it totally makes sense and it works great. You know, so I just want to be clear on that. So I, I love these community projects. In a traditional semester, I can probably swing a whole lot of different things, you know, that, that a group is engaging in over a semester. If I want those social learning pieces, I probably have to hone in on one, maybe two primary social driven, social learning driven pieces and just try to do them well and try to slow them down as much as possible so that they beca- so that they're helpful, so that they're helpful for students and they, they can actually learn in community. That's a priority for me. And that's part of why it, it, it kind of, it, you feel the rub in an accelerated class. That would mean practically like that one social learning experience might take the full six weeks or it might just be a three week yeah. thing and then then there's other components like, right yeah. right like that's what you're saying like yeah you're gonna boil you're gonna get that down so that that's either the fixture the the primary fixture of the learning experience for the whole six weeks or a large portion of it but like i've i've known of uh, courses that had you know a group project or even a group discussion forum every week of the course yeah yeah in a six or multiple, week or an eight week multiple course. forums plus a group project, right? Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, I've yes. seen yeah. accelerated courses in this space that like have three discussions in a singular week with like group projects. It's like it's cra- craziness. And I laugh because like it's you know, it's not like I was like a bystander that saw this stuff happen. Like it was <laughs> you know, like it was you know, yeah. I it You're a happened witness. while on, on duty. Um so like the <laughs> and have perpetuated certain things in those areas and so like but just i like where i think you're getting at which is kind of this idea of like i think i define it as like putting guide rails on yourself as the designer and the faculty member Mm. thinking about realistically what is possible in the midst of this um and like how can i get them to the finish line of those goals 
as kind of as lean as humanly possible. Like, I, I feel like that's kind <laughs> of the way you have to think about it a little bit. And, and like, how do we fit some of those things like you're talking about, like reflection and um, those breaks in the midst of that, that cycle of learning so that we can help and help it be less of a dump and more of a, more of like them actually being able to retrieve stuff that they're learning, be able to mm. come back to concepts, make connections between things. I know you and I have read different things like the, you know, talk about building shelves, like mental shelves for how they organize mm. the concepts that they're learning. Like how do we build some of those things in while also, um, and this is where my, my harping and my piece comes to, how can we also make sure like the UX and the design of the course works well? And that's where in these courses, like I will talk to people who think that doesn't matter as much. It's like, no, yeah. no, it does um, because this is the space they're going to be learning in. And so it needs to be understandable. It needs to be clear. It needs to not overwhelm them right away. They shouldn't open a week and see 13 different things in that week uh, going on. Cause that's immediately just going to shut them down and motivation is going to stop working and they're not going to get in they're going to end up getting behind and then when they get to the next week of another 13 things it's just going to continually push them to the point of not proceeding um, and that's that's a problem that reminds me of uh while i worked at your institution josh we had a new faculty member join us and this, it, it was a kind of an all-star and everybody's excited about him and i remember like trying to help get some set up with the system and stuff and and i swear he wasn't in there for three weeks he sent me an email he's like can we change the font you know like is this <laughs> like the the lms's font sucks like can we make this something better that's easier to read and and, and you know what i love that stuff i think about that stuff when certain things went I had never once to that day considered that a factor of learning, right? <laughs> like it had never struck me as like, maybe we should address that. And, and, you know, spoiler alert, we couldn't. Um, that's why you need better LMSs. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that's one of those moments you just like, wow, wow. like it doesn't, it, it's so simple. And, and really that's not even, that's not a teacher's issue, right? That does come back to somebody. That thing comes back to somebody in the technical side. Like, can we modify the font? You got to figure that out with your systems, but it makes a difference. Now we are prone. We have every opportunity to take this as far as we can. I mean, yeah. we've, we've been talking about this for years, so I am going to do a hard cut for us and pivot a little bit, but I'm going to come off of what Justin was saying about social constructivism there. The idea that learning happens together um, we want to try to highlight an app, you know, app, yeah, always. And Justin was prepped here to kind of think through a few, but I, I don't know, maybe that, maybe that conversation would point us towards something like Miro or, you know what I mean? Like something that okay. could deliver on that social. So what do you think? What is that? Is that going to be a land? Where do we go? I, I think yeah, that's you like? my app I'm going to recommend. I was, I okay. was using it today. Uh, Miro is, is, um, I have found it to be incredibly useful. I came across it years ago and only more recently revisited in the last six months or so. Um, so directing, I'm a, I'm a center of one, as I know a lot of my colleagues are at small <laughs> institutions like ours. Um, so like, so for me, it kind of falls on me to manage projects, to do a lot of uh, kind of brainstorming and especially my through my doctoral program. Some of the ways I've been trained is to how can I be a bridge from the learning theories and these abstract things to teaching practice for my faculty who are already experts in these other areas. And honestly, they may not need to know or even care about the zone of proximal development. Um, but like, I, I need to be a bridge for them. So so that kind of like storyboarding, brainstorming, I just love concept mapping too these guys give me a hard time all the time about my my concept mapping <laughs> um proclivity no never no uh, so and and miro has just taken off the ability to collaborate then present mm -hmm. your work um so a case 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 point for you um for the center for teaching and learning i'm launching a blog uh, kind of a soft launch this spring with a few posts and we'll eventually be, uh, in the fall welcoming our faculty to be co-writing hopefully students um just conversations about teaching and learning right so got to project manage that you've got to um and i do have another app which you know um we'll go to now that you i say probably, it. That's okay. say the name it's fine yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. No, no. Notion's one of our favorites. Well, we'll I've never, I've never heard of that. Uh, I don't do much with that app. <laughs> but, I, but I wanted that first glance. What's my timeline? I needed sticky notes is what I needed. And okay. uh, Miro uh, allowed me to do some of that and kind of create this, this massive whiteboard full of brainstorming plus timeline. You know, so it's kind of taking yeah. what some yeah. tools kind of centralize on and to pull mm -hmm. them all together. And that uh, I, I'm just loving it. And so and my supervisor 
walks in, what are you all, oh, wow, what are you working on? Like, just, just <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, let me tell you. And uh, Time to so, shine. Yeah, so uh, it's it's just a great, um, great little tool. I've been a, just, yeah, really becoming a fan all over again. Yeah. Right, cool. Well, and that's 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 that digital whiteboarding tool. We've we've done a little bit of a conversation. Well, we did a long We did quite conversation a conversation on, on it. Uh-huh. And we've come back to other alternatives too uh, in the midst of the high tech. Yeah. But, but the point in the pandemic of that is right. Like I remember my first, first week in the pandemic, like oh, yeah. I, I need to be able to make sticky notes. I want to make a whiteboard. Yeah. It's like Miro. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it's yeah. going to do it. You know, it's the well, digital version to accomplish. They've that. come leagues even since we've talked about it in high tech. I mean, what Justin's talking mm-hmm. about, they've really done a lot of collaborative features. They've done, we've released mm-hmm. some integrations for zoom and LMSs. Like there's, they're, wow. they're really doing some cool stuff. Um, and they're both, they, I think for a while, one of their weaknesses when we were dealing with high, like higher ed is like, they were very corporate focused. Like they were very much like a, if you know what agile project management is, they're like life was surrounded around that. And they've really, Really on making hit, that better yeah they've really hit the education world uh recently pretty hard and uh, i think they've just they've come up with some really cool tools i if if at anything i would promote the fact that like you there's literally a button where you can send students off into groups in the board and then click come back and it like just forces them all back to where you're at um i wish Power. that's how it worked in real life um <laughs> <laughs> press a button and they all walked back but uh yeah oh well, and I would say too, what more recently I've gotten really jazzed about is they have so many templates, and I mean mm. so many. Yeah, they um, and particularly for me working with faculty, they have. I love to do ideating exercises, and um, even one of the things I've been more into, and wish I have a little more time, hopefully in the future to get into, is just uh, play, uh, serious play. And I, I think that the sure. best, the sure. best kind of work is playful. Uh, it's kind of a uh, just I, I know it, you know, knowing as humans, that's part of who we are. Like we, uh, it's part of being human that we play at work uh, at our best. And so, so I think um, uh, there, there was just there's there's a whole host they have of just templates. You can just pull them and immediately go for it. And when I have faculty in our location, I've got faculty in three, primarily three cities uh, sometimes that I'm dealing, that I'm, that wow. I'm uh, yeah. leading, leading a workshop with or something. And so for us to just be able to fly and move and we don't have those physical post-its, I may have them in my office, but man, we can do those digitally and everyone can see what each other's mm-hmm. doing in real time. That's, that's kind of a game changer. Even for those kind of uh, when I'm, when I'm uh, doing something live, and it's not meant to be presented. It's just meant to be an activity we do together. Boom. It's ready to go. I don't have to build it ready to go. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And, cool. and you can, you can get anybody in there, you know, you just need a Gmail account or whatever. It's, it's so it's easy super, to run that, yeah. that product and work easy. with it. Yeah. I mean, technically Amir, you can share with people. They don't even need to put in an email. I mean, you can, like, Oh, I take wow. it back. Yeah. Just, just share, people, share so you you, just, like, bring one person. Yes. And they, no, they come in as like this obscure guest one guest two mysterious yeah. person, but you know, just have them tell you who they are and you're good um, well it's not like a google with anonymous kangaroo and, and no you it's, know, it's not yeah. sneaky sloth or whatever i don't think they do yeah. that at this point i could be wrong i'd have to check i haven't i haven't done it in a little bit bring in random people oh, but i love those kind of things well thank you justin what a yeah, what an awesome conversation i mean we've had this conversation over lunch a hundred times yeah but we have i appreciate you taking the time to record it with us and join the high tech high jinxery i don't know i don't yeah, oh, yeah. That, joining that, that did not roll high tech hall of fame i think we were saying like high tech family and i was like there's like there. there's like two of us yeah we have family at this point <laughs> <laughs> yeah man we'll, we'll figure something out yeah we're yeah, like a we'll small canoeing learning. group <laughs> <laughs> we we can no longer kayak because there's three of us yes but we can, we yeah. can canoe. yeah okay yeah it's fine that's amazing. No, thanks so much, guys. It's always great hanging out with you. It's 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 always too much fun. So yeah, anytime. We'll be sure to have you back. Uh, in just a moment here, Josh and I will wrap things up and give a little bit of debrief. But until then, uh, thank you so much, Justin. We'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks. Justin, Jay Ham, Jay, Jay Baby. I am always <laughs> so thankful. Many, so many things. Yeah, you, you're over there like trying to come up with nicknames for me every episode. I'm like, I know his. I got his nicknames down I mean, pat, man. I am now going to call him J-Baby that I didn't know was a thing, oh, but yeah. I'm gonna. that's now the nickname. I actually use that nickname for anyone with the first letter J in their name. I don't know why. I have Jasons really? and Justins in my life, and I call them all J-Baby. I don't think you've ever called me J-Baby. I'm a little offended. Oh. All right, well, that, you know, that I'm, I, you're now J-Baby. That hurts. I'll, I'm going to add you okay. in. I, I didn't even... <laughs> Didn't even register my mind as I said I'm, that. Like, this Josh is a from what we were, from what we were literally about to do, which is talk about the just real quick debrief from that 
wonderful conversation with J Baby Justin. J <laughs> um. Baby Justin. <laughs> yeah, like the fact that he and I have known each other for so long is is awesome, and we've had these conversations before. It's yeah. it's it's actually fulfilling to finally record one. You know, like there's posterity yeah. now that like this has for, happened for like a purpose. Yeah, it felt more purposeful. Right. As opposed to just like sitting there eating a crappy sandwich in a conference room, complaining <laughs> about our lives. Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, I, and I gotta be honest, like I've worked with obviously folks like we, we've mentioned it and uh, I don't know if it really came out in our conversations, but, um, we'll work with Justin a lot longer before like will Justin and I've worked together and even Justin and I working together now, he's gone to another office. Um, and by God, I mean, he runs an office of himself. Um, he runs and, it very uh, well. It's a tight ship. You yes. Know? It's a tight <laughs> ship. Only he's got that one employee. Uh, <laughs> I wonder rat. if he doesn't play the month awards. I hope he does. Evaluation. Is that like a valedictorian for homeschoolers? Yeah. Like, you know, best, best prize. Um, no. <laughs> like, so anyway, like interactions with Justin. I don't think I really realized like how much background he's had with accelerated learning. Right. Like I, I think I made that joke that was like, there's maybe a moment you need to question. What have you been doing? If you've got this much history with accelerated <laughs> right. learning, <laughs> but it is a lot of really good insights. And I think packages, what we're hoping the series comes out to for a couple, couple things. One, we don't want the series to just be a trash vest. We're not just going to trash accelerated learning. Although it may verge on that at certain points. It's going to prep you for the, maybe some trash. The waves you're about to embark, okay? Um, but the the point is, is just like I think taking a careful look at what it is and what it's been meant for. And I think if I had anything to take away from our conversation with Justin, it's like it really is that I feel like my hot take is always going to be that accelerated learning has become kind of this thing where we make an argument that people can learn in short bursts, and that's why they must be able to learn accelerated. But we undercut what that actually is just by taking a course that was supposed to be 14 weeks right? and jamming right. it into six to eight. We weeks. say we have one goal for how we're going to deliver it and why we should deliver it. And then we do something completely opposite. We do something different and because of accreditation. And it's a complex issue. It's not just like right. institutions were like, well, this is what we want to do. We, we have to get certain credit loads in. We have to like, there's, there's crediting bodies. There's all this type of stuff. Like, so I understand why it's become the thing it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I struggle with what it's become. And I think I was just, I really appreciated Justin's perspectives in, um, the difficulties in designing it and, um, but even what it looks like to take 14 weeks worth of SLOs and jam it into eight weeks. Right. Like that's, and, and, um, but, but even, yeah. even in his experience, and I, I don't think we brought this up in the episode, but when his first semester, um, working with me at, at our institution and teaching, his, I believe his son was born. It might have been his second child, his daughter, but uh, a ch- one of his children was born and it was in the middle of his first accelerated online course. And he, even in the midst of it, had to figure out how to like uh, pivot and, and teach the class, you know, in a flipped classroom context, like recording his lecture, putting it up, creating some learning activities. Like from day one, he's had like some successes and some really, um, I guess, even exciting opportunities because of accelerated learning. You know, like, yeah, if, if that was traditional classroom, he might have just gotten a sub or something. But he was like challenged because it was online to find a new way to deliver that same level of instruction, even though he had to be in the delivery room, I think, literally the night of yeah. class. Like, it was crazy how that played out. So, yeah, yeah, just just a big thank you to Justin for all of his insights and um, and, and that wealth of knowledge that he's, that he's pulling into it. This episode, episode one is intended here, like you've heard from a designer, a teacher, um, our next episode in the series is going to be hearing a student perspective. So we'll be welcoming a student who uh, is in an accelerated learning program and hearing the good, the bad, and the ugly and uglier um, as, as we <laughs> dig into yeah. you know the, how it's been working for this, this, this student. Um, and I, th- I think there's like an app involved. We're, this is a little bit looser of our regular structure. We're trying to focus really in on this accelerated learning uh, conversation, yeah. but we'll make sure that there's some tech involved as well. Anything else? Did I miss anything on next episode? No, I think you're. Oh. I think you're right there. I'm trying. We're doing I'm episode trying to... two. We're gonna hit the student perspective, and uh, yeah, I'm. I'm excited for what's gonna come out of that conversation and kind of the next stage of just talking about accelerated learning. And again, though, I think if we if I could sum up the goal of the series, it's just to like take a careful, thoughtful look at accelerated learning, especially because for Will and I, who kind of focus on the higher ed area in this podcast. 
it's a very popular form of education in higher ed and increasingly becoming popular as COVID has, ex- has accelerated <laughs> some of what's happened with online and some of these degree programs. And it's becoming very popular in graduate school. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's important to talk about it and take a careful look at uh, what, what we're doing. Um, and are we doing the best thing we could be doing? How could we at least make it better for those of us who, who are choosing to do it or institutions are choosing to do it? Uh, how can we make the best of it just to enhance that, that learning experience yeah. uh, in there? So, yeah. All right, folks. Until next time, as we continue to learn what it is to harness technology in the physical and digital classroom, we'll see you. See ya. See ya.